Welcome to Chris Parkin Shooting Sports. Today we've got the full review of the new Element Optics Helix HD Scope. This is now an 8x director tube with 2 to 16 times magnification, 50mm objective lens and a 30mm tube. I've been using this scope for a couple of weeks and I have to say I can significantly notice the differences between this and the previous Helix versions. And I'm going to give you some of the details as to why. When you open the box, the first thing you encounter is the fact it comes with both stretch rubber lens caps and also flip up lens caps. These lens caps are easy to take on or off if you need to and at the back end we've got a fast focus eyepiece that makes sure you've got a crystal clear reticle picture. The scope is available in two versions, the standard HD or the HDLR. The HDLR is a long range version and it's got adjustable fast target turrets on it with a zero stop as well. These are more similar to the previous Helix version. Looking at detail at the more sporting variants of the scope, it's got capped turrets. But when I say turrets, dials, use the words you like. These are a little bit more than dials and a little bit less than tall turrets. You can take them off, you can adjust them to mark zero position. But very interestingly, they actually come with these small collars. And when you take these collars out of the packet, if you've taken the cap off, you can actually put one of these collars over here and cover up those threads. So you can leave it as a slimline exposed dial scope which has still got all its full waterproof capabilities on a sporting rifle with less turret height which is likely to snag on leaves or foliage. Parallax control on the left side goes from 10 meters to infinity, so you can use this scope on any rifle type, from a rim fire to an air rifle all the way up to a center fire. There's a significant amount, 100 millimeters of eye relief, so you've no trouble with recoil control on the larger center fires. And again, because of the fact it's got that 10 millimeter minimum parallax distance, it's going to suit an air rifle too. And air rifles are one of the rifles that you can use most of all in any light condition, so it makes sense to have a high quality optic on them to get the most of their capabilities. The previous Helix didn't have illumination. This one does have illumination control and you can see on the left side here, there are six positions with intermediate off positions to control the single spot red dot in the center of the reticle. This one has got the Raptor reticle in it, but you can also have the APR-1C, more tactical reticle, especially if you're gonna go for the HDLR version with the more dialing capable scope. two times magnification means you've got lots of field of view. So you can pick up quarry, track quarry when it's moving, and you're more likely to be able to see quarry when it reacts to a shot. Magnification is controlled by a heavily segmented collar at the front of the ocular body. You can use this with just your fingertips or you can add the supplied throw lever which screws in place once you've taken one of the Allen keys out, all the tools are supplied and that makes it just a little bit quicker, a little bit easier to adjust in a hurry. Tip from me, always leave your magnification down low because usually if you need it turned up you've got time to do it. But if you need it turned down and you encounter something on 16 power, those fractions of a second can be wasted time. That applies to any rifle scope. A 30mm tube means you've got lots of scope mounting options. And on the right side, the windage control is identical to the elevation control. You can also put one of the small rings on to cover up the threads if you want to leave the cap in your tool bag. 
Other items supplied, you get the Allen keys for changing the throw lever, you get an Element Optics sticker, there's also a nice cleaning cloth. The joy of a second focal plane scope like the Raptor with hash marks below the main zero point of the reticle means that by adjusting magnification, you can actually adjust those marks to fit exactly the drops of your rifle. Elements supply these quite handy stickers. And if you see here, we've got the 100 meter zero or whatever zero you want, then you can add in four other distances in these boxes to make sure you know exactly how you need to dial your scope for magnification to hit the target at the range you've got. Enter your zero distance and also write down the magnification you set it on because of course if you vary that magnification on a hunt, you need to know where you can go back to. So for example, if you've set your reticle up on six power, make sure it's on six power. If you set it up on 12 power, make sure it's on 12 power before you take your shot because your shot will then match these dimensions. Once those are all set up, put them on the inside of your lens cap, close your lens cap up, and of course you flip that open and you can see that. But if you want, put it on the inside of the lens cap so when it's down, you will also know what it is. And then you flick it open and it's totally out of your way. You can refer to it then any time you like, whether you want to have it available all the time or just when you're about to shoot. Magnification is 2 to 16 times, tube diameter is 30 millimetres, objective lens diameter is 50 millimetres. The exit pupil goes from 8.5 to 3.1 millimetres between 2 and 16 times magnification. Eye relief is 101.6 millimetres, which is 4 inches. The reticle itself is crisp, it's sharp, the fast focus eyepiece gives you a great picture and now with the illumination control on the side you've got that ability to add that immediate centre point of aim. And if you are for example in a situation with driven game, keep the scope down at 2 power, put the illuminated reticle on nice and crisp and you've got an immediate aim point with massive field of view and with the parallax set on about 50 metres, 75 metres you are not going to have a problem with an image that's out of focus and not being able to see or aim precisely on your quarry. The flip side of that is, if you do miss or the quarry's further out, you can zoom up, you can change your parallax, you can make adjustments to your aim point, and then you can make precision shots as well. So the scope is very, very versatile for a hunting scenario. Field of view and metric dimensions is 20.2 meters to 2.51 meters at 100 meters. The click values are 10th milliradian, which is one centimeter at 100 meters. If you were to move to the THLR setup, you've got those larger fast dialing turrets. They work exactly the same as the previous element scopes I've shown you before, and there's plenty of videos on my channel using those, so please take a look at some of those videos. Look in the description down below, or I might put some cards on screen so you can see those. Overall length is 340 millimeters or 13.4 inches. Overall weight is 728 grams or 25.6 ounces. I've used this on targets where I've shot some very, very tight precision groups using air rifles. I've also used it on 2-2 rimfire, I've used it on an FAC air rifle, and I've also used it on this 17 HMR. One of the things about 17 HMR is it's a 4.5mm bullet. It leaves a bullet hole that's probably less than 4.5mm in a piece of paper. So being able to see those on the paper at distance is a real sign of how good the resolution is on the optic. I can see 100 meter bullet holes in white paper with this scope. I was impressed by that, it's a step beyond the previous Helix. The Raptor reticle itself with a precise red dot in the centre doesn't bloom out, it doesn't wash into you, it doesn't disturb you at all. There's, there's still plenty of space around the reticle so you can see bullet splash or quarry movement. Eye relief is 100 millimetres, so you've got no problem with recoil if it is on a centre fire rifle. Most importantly, the eye box is still quite versatile and you can pick the rifle up very quickly, put your head in position and you've got great sight picture. High magnification scopes are great in some environments, but actually low magnification scopes are usually quicker, faster, simpler and easier to use. And providing they've got that crystal clear clarity and resolution, you don't notice so much that you haven't got high magnification. 
High magnification was something that came in 15 or 20 years ago when it was possible in cheaper optics because they thought if we can make the image bigger, it makes it look more precise. Whereas the European optics at higher standards stayed with lower magnification but had a much sharper picture quality. It meant you could have those very fine etched reticles still giving you a crisp picture to aim precisely with. Optics made in the rest of the world now have caught up with that. The glass quality has caught up massively. The coatings, the lens grinding, everything is done to a much higher standard and you get a beautiful flat field of view in this scope from edge to edge. There are no vignettes. The eye box and exit pupil are both round and it's very comfortable through recoil on any rifle or differences in changes in position and movement that you can never struggle to find that crisp circular scope picture. Having zeroed and used this scope alone on three rifles, I've found the actual adjustment and the mechanics of the scope have been reliable. Return to zero has been good if I flip backwards between rifle from one to the other because I'm using Picatinny mounts on it so I can swap between Picatinny rails and different rifles. Being able to dial, know exactly where it is, take the turret cap off, reset that back to zero if I want to, it's all ultra reliable and I'm totally happy using it. Colour rendition is warm, I've not had any problems with chromatic aberration and you get lots of problems with low sunlight at this time of year. There is a lens shade supplied if you do want to use one, some people like them, other people want to keep the rifle more compact. I've used this in hunting scenarios, not specifically target scenarios, but when I have used it in target scenarios I can shoot tiny groups with this scope because it has been ultra precise in windage and elevation control and movement. Element always supply a very good instruction manual. Their website is also good for functional explanations and it helps you set up your rifle scope when you get it. The Raptor reticle here has been supplied with two examples of calibers set up 308 and 65 Creedmoor and that's been set up at 10 times magnification and 8 times magnification. And when you vary this you'll see how that works for yourself on your rifle, whether it be an air rifle or a centerfire, 308, 300 wind mag even perhaps. And they've entered in here distances where those hash marks aim over precisely for known target ranges. The scope is durable and assured by Element Optics' own Platinum Lifetime Warranty. The scope is very capable for long range as well because on this metric version there's 29 milliradians of vertical travel for long range capability. That equates to about 100 minutes of angle if that's your preferred dimension. The scope's aluminium body is very smooth in finish and it's also anodized smoothly. So it's this beautiful black finish and it doesn't pick up the dust of the skin from your fingers. It hasn't marked with foliage being rubbed against it and so far I'm very happy with this optic. I genuinely think this scope is a fantastic compromise between overall optical capability, overall mechanical capability, the actual price it is and the assurances of long range reliability from Elements Platinum Warranty. Come to the British Shooting Show check one out because I think it's a really really nice buy and it's a scope I'm looking forward to putting on a few other rifles and when it comes I'm going to be using some night vision on the back as well to make sure I can use it in all circumstances and all scenarios. Well I hope you've enjoyed watching this review of the Element Scope. Please like, subscribe, comment and don't forget to click the notification bell and if you go all the way through to the end of the video there's a link to this year's British Shooting Show for tickets and tickets for 2023 also include car parking for the day. Thank you for watching, bye for now.